So I said in my last video that I wasn't sure when I would be active again because I was waiting for word back on when my channel would get monetized and all that. And uh, YouTube told me uh, earlier today, or I found out earlier today, that I need about 900 more public hours on my channel before I'm eligible. So obviously I'm going to be putting out some more videos uh, until I can get monetized. So for those of you who are, who are subscribed, please, the viewership really, really matters right now if I want to get my channel monetized. So any viewership is very much needed right now. So thank you all your subscribers for your attention and your support. And hopefully we, we can get the channel monetized pretty soon. Okay, so with all that out of the way, let's talk about the plans on getting Major League Baseball restarted. Now, this plan was approved by the MLB owners earlier today. It is March, not March, May 11th, 2020 as I'm recording this. And the plan here is to play an 82-game season starting in the 4th of July weekend. So we don't have an exact day yet. Um, July 1st, which has been a rumored target for a while now, is a Wednesday. So possibly Wednesday or even Thursday, July 2nd, which Thursday was supposed to be the day of the week the season was supposed to open back in March. So point being somewhere around the July 1st slash 4th weekend is when the season's supposed to start. So we have some interesting stuff to talk about here for the season. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the season length. So the season is gonna be 82 games long. Now 82 games is roughly half of a regular season. In fact, it's actually one game more than half a season. Cause half a season would be 81 games if it's 162 games. So yeah, we'll just say half a season. Now, some people are probably not too happy about the idea of playing half a season, but you know what? Honestly, I don't care. Half a season or no season, yeah, give me the half season. As much as I've been enjoying uh, the Korean Baseball League, that's been kind of interesting. Yeah, I am excited for Major League Baseball to come back. So it's interesting here how we have a shortened season and what I think is going to happen for future seasons. Now, in my opinion, 162 games, and I think I could speak on behalf of a lot of people by saying this, it's just too long. 162 games is too long. And I do think it does need to be shortened. Because in the past seasons, having 162 games, I feel like the season has gotten really fatigued around August. Now I say August because September's when things kind of get more interesting because, you know, that's when teams clinch division titles and that's when teams get eliminated and all that. Unless you're the Orioles and then you get eliminated in August. But yeah, for the most part, we can agree that August is kind of the most boring month of baseball because August is kind of that month where nothing really happens. By August, we're usually past the deadline. Games are still being played with no real solid foundation on the playoffs yet. It's just, it, to me, August is the most boring month of baseball. And even in July, post-All-Star game can be kind of boring too, although there is the trade deadline that makes things slightly more interesting. But still, like that month and a half period from the second half of July to August, it's just not that exciting in baseball. They could shave some of that off. And part of the reason for that is because of how long the season is. It could be shortened a bit. Now, I'm not saying they should permanently shorten the season to 82 games. That's kind of short. I'm not totally sure why the season's only 82 games. Personally, I would have gone with at least 100 games, maybe even 120. But in any case, I do think this is going to be the open door to shorten the season in the future. Because I think most people agree that 162 games is just too long. Now, how long should the season be? Now, in my opinion, I think seasons post-2020 should be aimed at around 120 games. I think that's right there, 120 games is perfect. 60 games at home and 60 games on the road. I think that would be perfect right there. And I think the games that should be cut back, and I might get a bit of controversy for saying this, I think the games that should be cut back are the interleague games. Because to me, the interleague games are just not that interesting. Because, okay, think about across town rivalries. We have the Dodgers and the Angels, the White Sox and the Cubs, the Yankees and the Mets, and Oakland and San Francisco. Now those are all considered rivals in Major League Baseball, and for obvious reasons. But compare the A's versus Giants rivalry to Giants versus Dodgers, or even possibly A's versus Angels. Those rivalries are much more interesting than across town rivalries. See, I feel like those kind of rivalries like Oakland and San Francisco are just kind of a bit forced. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't fans of one of those teams that hates the other team. I'm just saying they're not quite as heated. Not to mention, cutting back on interleague games 
allows for a more unique experience in the World Series, should those two teams meet. See, the thing is, when you have teams like, like the Mets and the Yankees, for example, when they met in the World Series back in 2000, now that was interesting, but to me it's just not as interesting when those two teams already meet every year in the regular season, because the interleague rivalries that are, you know, across town, those happen every single year. And so when you have a World Series between those two teams, it's just not as interesting. I'm not saying it's not interesting at all, it's just less interesting. I think it's more interesting when two teams can only meet in the World Series, especially when there are cross-town rivalries. I just think that's more interesting. So in my opinion, and people will disagree with me on this, that is fine, but I think if they shorten the season, I think they should shorten the season to around 120 games in the future after 2020, and the interleague game should be the first ones to go. They're just not that interesting. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the home stadiums. So, it says here in this ESPN article, the use of home stadiums will be used in areas that have local and state governmental approval. Now, I don't really understand what they mean by this because chances are most, if not the entire season, will be played without fans. So, I'm not totally sure what difference it would make. If we were talking about fans in the stands, I could understand, but I'm not really sure what difference it makes. But in any case, I think places that are more impacted by the coronavirus, the stadiums in those places will probably not be used. So, for example, Yankee Stadium and City Field. Two obvious examples I don't think will be used in the regular season. I think it's very possible that the governor of New York, whatever his name, uh, Kumo, I think that's his name, I think that's how you pronounce it. I can't really see him being on board with this, but I, who knows? Maybe he will be. But in any case, it does look like Major League Baseball wants to use as many home stadiums as possible. So in other words, these talks we had in the past about how they might be using hub areas like Arizona, Florida, and even Texas came into a play at one point. That whole idea seems to be gone. It seems like Major League Baseball wants to use as many stadiums as they can. I think they want to play out the season about as normally as they possibly can, with really the only difference being no fans in the stands. And I think the only teams that won't be playing in their home ballparks are, again, in places where government officials might not give the okay, like New York, for example. I could see New York. I could see Los Angeles being a another example. But really, I, I think very few places are going to be in that kind of position where they won't allow their stadiums to be used for empty stadium games. So really the only areas I see for that are New York and Los Angeles, and by Los Angeles I also am talking about Anaheim. But other than that, I think we're going to see the teams play mostly in their home ballparks. So like uh, St. Louis, home ballpark. Uh, Rangers, Astros, Rays, Marlins. Most teams I think are going to play in their home ballparks. I guess Baltimore and Washington DC are other candidates, and possibly Boston but we're at uh, two, four, five, six, seven. We're at seven ballparks. So I think those are gonna be the only ones that won't allow it. And that's worst case scenario too. Although another ballpark that will probably not be seeing any home games is Toronto. Now, regardless of whether Canada clears for any empty game, empty stadium games to be played in Toronto, big problem. There's a 14 day quarantine for anyone who wants to go into Canada. I talked about this in my NHL video a few days ago. So regardless of the number of cases in Toronto, they're just not going to be able to play in Toronto with that quarantine in place. So unless that quarantine is lifted, which is very unlikely, there's just no way they're going to be able to play in Toronto. There's no way players can quarantine for 14 days mid-season just to go into Toronto and play. Not to mention the Blue Jays themselves would also have to quarantine going back into Toronto having played other teams in the United States. It would just be much easier if the Blue Jays played in the United States. Now, where would they play exactly? Well, that has not been announced yet, but I think most likely the Blue Jays are going to play their games somewhere in Florida, at probably a spring training facility in Florida, which makes sense because, again, if there's no fans in the stands, it won't matter where they play. Although, I think it's going to be very interesting how the Blue Jay players will feel about playing in Florida because, you know, I don't think Blue Jays players are all that familiar with playing in humidity since you know they play in Canada and they play with a closed dome most of the time 
Now and then it's open, but most of the time when I watch recaps and stuff, it's closed. And of course, the couple times they play in Florida, they're always indoors. If they play in Tampa, they're always going to be indoors regardless because Tropicana's roof doesn't retract. So yeah, even when they play in Florida, they're still not really used to the humidity. So playing outdoors in Florida, which they're going to have to do if they're going to play at a spring training facility, yeah, that's going to be interesting. I mean, I suppose the only other option would be if somehow they shared the stadium with the Rays and the Marlins, but that might be too difficult to coordinate, you know? Because your only option would be A, to have the Blue Jays play home games when the Rays or Marlins are, are on the road, or, which, yeah, and if, if they're going to minimize travel, there might be more games in those stadiums. So, yeah, it might be easier in the long run, everything considered, if they just play at a spring training facility. They could play in Arizona, but good heavens, who would want to play in Arizona, you know? I mean, Florida might be humid, but if I was a Blue Jays player and I had to play in a spring training stadium, yeah, give me Florida over Arizona any day. Even if they play games at night, it can still get pretty hot in Arizona at nighttime. Although... And this is something else we're going to have to figure out, too. Rain. Because that's why the ballparks in Florida have roofs. Not so much because of the heat, but because it rains so much there. So if they have to play outdoors... Yeah, I just realized if they have to play outdoors, there could be a lot of rain delays for the Blue Jays, which leads to a lot of games being postponed. So you know what? Their only option might be to share a stadium with either Tampa or Florida. By Florida, I mean Miami. I'm so used to calling them the Florida Marlins for some reason. I don't know why, but anyway. And that's going to be interesting to coordinate, too. The good news in that would be the heat, necessarily, if it does get hot in Florida this summer, is, again, they'll have a roof, so that won't be a problem. And this is something else, too, and not just with the Blue Jays. And this takes me back to another point. Not just with the Blue Jays, but if other teams like the Yankees, Mets, Red Sox, Dodgers, if they have to share stadiums with other teams... And if somehow the spring training venues are an option for one reason or the other, whether it's Arizona because it gets hot, Florida because it rains, and if we have to have double headers in each stadium with different teams, that's going to raise another interesting question, extra innings. Because if you're going to have more than one game in these stadiums, you're not going to be able to have 17, 18, 19, 20 inning games. Which, granted, those don't happen very often, but still. You're going to have to find a way to avoid that so the later games don't get postponed or delayed because the earlier games took so long to finish. So, are they going to have some kind of inning cap where they just call the game a tie after, I don't know, 12, 15 innings? Kind of like what they do in Japan and uh, even Korea, I think, does that too, so... That's going to be interesting. Major League Baseball hasn't really said much on that, though there was speculation early on during all this that games could even be shortened to seven innings. Now, they're not talking about that right now necessarily, thank goodness, because I think that's a terrible idea. I would rather games in a tie, honestly. But if they can consider seven innings, they could consider ties. And if they have to share stadiums and stuff, I don't see why they would not at least consider that. And if, if they don't want games to end in ties, I mean, they could, I guess, just award victory to the home team in said case. Uh, I, I don't know. But yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if they implement an inning cap or not. I haven't seen any news that says they are, but I also haven't seen any news that says they aren't either. So I don't think anything can be totally ruled out at this point, if you understand. So there's a talk about how the season has been completely re-renovated and there's been all kinds of ideas like 10 team divisions, uh, reorganized divisions based on geographical area. There's been all kinds of talk on that. And so I guess for that reason, they're talking about there being a, a universal designated hitter. Now again, I have to wonder if Major League Baseball is using this as sort of an experiment because there's been increased argument, I think, over the past couple of seasons that the National League should adapt the American League rules because, all in all, I think most people can agree that American League is better than National League. See, I'm just not a big fan of the whole idea of pitchers having to bat. And most people don't seem to be a fan of that either. There's been calls for the National League to convert to American League. So I'm starting to wonder, is Major League Baseball using this as an open door to test that idea out? Kind of like how they're testing out a shorter season. Because moving into the next point here, it says geographical scheduling. Teams will only play in-division opponents and interleague opponents in the similar area. So for example, 
American League Central teams would only play AL Central teams and NL Central teams. So in other words, West teams would only play other West teams, and East teams would only play other East teams, regardless of whether it's American or National League. So it's interesting to see where this season is going to go, but more importantly, where it's going to go in the future. Because it's very possible we aren't going to see a totally back to normal season starting with next season. What I mean by that is we could see a shortened season in the future around 120 games. We could see the National League go to American League rules and have a designated hitter universal. We could also see a permanent expansion of the playoffs if that pans out. So there's a lot of interesting stuff going on here that we could end up being permanent in the future. Now, one more thing I want to talk about in this video that's not addressed in the ESPN article is the All-Star Game. Now, I don't... There's no official word on whether the All-Star Game will be played or not, but I don't see how the All-Star Game is going to be played. And if Major League Baseball wants to minimize travel, that's going to be a problem too, because whether the All-Star Game is held in, in Los Angeles like it's supposed to be, or somewhere else, all the players from all the different teams are all going to have to travel to the same location. And I can see Major League Baseball being like, well, let's not do that this year if we don't have to. And since the All-Star game doesn't really affect like like the playoffs or anything, and even if it did, they could find a way around that, I could see Major League Baseball going, yeah, you know what, we're not going to have an All-Star game this year. We'll save that for later on. Now, 2021 is already taken because that's when Atlanta's going to host the All-Star game. So most likely they would just move Los Angeles to 2022. Now, this right here is a good argument as to why it's not a good idea, in my opinion, to, to announce these sites for things like the All-Star Game and the Super Bowl and the NHL Winter Classic years in advance. Now, NHL and Major League Baseball only announce it up to, uh, NHL is up to one year. I think Major League Baseball is up to two years for the Winter Classic and All-Star Game respectively. But, but look at the Super Bowl. Look how they announced the Super Bowl like years in advance. They have the 2024 Super Bowl already announced. That's going to be played at, um... New Orleans, they've announced where the 2024 Super Bowl is going to be played. Now, I doubt this the NFL season is going to be affected by this, but in the off chance it is, how's that going to work out? Because the, the next Super Bowl is supposed to be played in Tampa in 2021. If that doesn't happen, are they going to move it to next year? Are they going to move all the other years up? Or are they going to move Tampa to the back of the line and have that game be played in 2025? You know, so I think announcing these neutral sites years in advance is kind of much i think they should do it like one year two years at the very most in cases like that and again this could be another lesson learned as to why that's a good idea to not announce things years in advance like that this is cool sky productions that's all i have to say on this topic let me know your thoughts in the comments below uh yeah i'm looking forward to major league baseball returning and once it does actually return i think that's going to open the door for other leagues to begin returning as well like i think we'll see nhl nba uh well nfl is not really affected by this uh major league soccer i think we're going to start seeing a lot more of those leagues start to make plans to come back once major league baseball is the first one to have done that actually it's second since nascar has already done that although maybe that doesn't count in your mind but yeah it'll be interesting to see how this is going it's very interesting and i'm looking forward to major league baseball returning once again so uh, again, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And once again, thank you everybody for the views and the support. I need it more now than ever in my quest to get my channel monetized. So yeah, thank you as always for tuning in. And until next time, this is Clear Sky Productions, signing off. Good night, folks.